Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Homestead Projects. My name is Bruce, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a custom handle for your microwave oven. <laughs> You're looking at the door of my Kenmore microwave oven, and the handle, which is basically destroyed, is broken a couple of times. We've glued it, put it back on, and it's just cheap plastic. Now I gotta give it a little bit of credit. This microwave is about 12 years old. To the best of my knowledge it was in the house when we bought it we've been in the house three years and the house is about 12 years old so i'm guessing that it's probably a 12 year old microwave unless it's been replaced at some point anyway here's all the parts and bits and pieces <laughs> that i could pick up off the floor and dug out of the microwave i know what you're thinking well you can just go online and buy a new handle and 10 or 20 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever and screw it on there and be done with it and that may be true i did do some research trying to find a replacement handle for this microwave and i cannot find one i guess that's not true i did find one on the kenmore parts website they wanted about 90 dollars for the plastic handle no way am i going to pay 90 bucks for that thing you can get them from 10 bucks up to 60 off of Amazon if you can find the right handle. But I read a lot of the posts on the ones I saw, saw some that looked just like it. And uh, people were saying it didn't fit or it doesn't fit my microwave. And I put in the model number and everything. I still can't find it. So I thought the heck with it. I'm just going to take a little bit of time and build my own handle. It's basically going to cost me almost nothing, just a few bucks and and definitely some of my time to put this together but once I took the door off of the uh, microwave got to pull this plastic rim off around it thought I was going to break that getting it off there but I was lucky and didn't break it so I can access the holes from the back side of where that handle screws in here and I'm going to take small pieces of scrap metal I got laying around luckily I, I like to dabble with TIG welding TIG welder is perfect for this type of thing, and I have no idea what it's going to look like when I'm done, but I guarantee it'll be functional. Anyway, I'm going to show you the different steps and how I'm going to put it together, and maybe I'll paint the thing, and maybe I won't. But let's put it together and see what it looks like. So I've got a piece of, I think it's half inch rod here. It's hollow, about an eighth inch wall on it. I use it for making hinges and that sort of thing. And uh, I think I can use that for this handle. So I'm going to take that in and clean it up a little bit with a uh, surface conditioning disc from Benchmark Abrasives on my air angle grinder. Clean up a couple feet of that and cut a piece off of there and get my pieces ready to go to make this uh, microwave door handle. And uh, we'll go from there. And it only cost me a couple bucks. I picked it up at the salvage yard. All right, here's where I am so far. I've got two pieces. These are an inch and a half long. And then one piece, which is 13. This is how far the handle will stand off from the door. Basically, I'm just gonna weld this on top of those two pieces. I'm gonna get these two TIG welded on the back as straight and square as I possibly can because the measurement between the center of that hole and the center of this hole is gonna be pretty much critical so that it'll fit on the door. Mine is uh, 10 and 5 8 inch center to center on those holes. So I've got that marked out on this piece and then that's how I'm gonna lay it up and tack weld it, double check the measurements and then weld it up solid.
This is a piece of scrap stainless steel 16th inch that I picked up at a local fab shop just for making parts like this. And I'm just going to dream up a size. I'm going to make it, uh, I think, an inch and a half wide and two inches long. I'm going to drill a couple of half inch holes in them using a step drill and then cut them out and smooth up the edges and kind of make them look nice. Pretty well have all the pieces built and ready to install. On the uh, last clip you saw me putting epoxy in these holes. Then I heated that up and turned it upside down so most of the epoxy would run down toward the end where it needs to be. And that's just, just going to make kind of like a little grommet inside there to put the screw into. I'm going to use the original screws that came with the, with the door, with the broken door on this microwave oven. And then I built these stainless steel plates. I had to do just a little bit of work in these holes to accommodate the uh, half inch diameter, slightly more than a half inch on this, this uh, steel tube that I have, just so that that would fit in those holes properly. And then these stainless steel covers, I'll, I'll peel this off and use the good side out but just to show you what it'll kind of look like, these are going to cover up all the grind marks and anything else, any other imperfections around those holes, just to kind of give it a finished look. I'm just going to glue those on with some silicone glue, tape them in place, and then uh, screw the handle in place. But that's basically what it'll look like when it's when it's completed. So let me get that glued in place, taped up, handle screwed in, and I'll put the door back on the microwave and uh, we'll come back and I'll show you what the final product looks like. 